Hello, I'm going to talk about this little meter today. And uh, this is a meter I picked up on Amazon for about $31, $32. And they're somewhat popular. And it's actually a good little meter, but the instructions are really hard to understand. So I thought I would just give a quick video or make a quick video that uh, details uh, how this little meter works. These are two of the common listings on Amazon and you can see that uh, approximately $31, $32. The unit I purchased was the Yiko. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced properly, but basically $32. These units look to be identical on the uh, digital and display portion. This is my setup. I have a AC to DC power supply. This is a switching power supply that is 12 volts and rated for 30 amps. This is the uh, ammeter that I purchased off of Amazon. It consists of two pieces, the digital side with all the electronics and the measurement and the sensor. I have a small switch here which uh, powers goes to the power to the electronics here and I'll discuss that a little bit more and then I have another power switch here which uh, it reverses the current going through the sensor so I can simulate a battery charging and a battery discharging and I can also show some of the calibration then I have uh, my Regal DL3021 and this is good up to 40 amps uh, of load. So this is a quick drawing of what we have. There's the, this is the digital display, this is the sensor, the sensor is marked with a direction on uh, the sensor. I have my power supply, my load, and this switch which selects a straight through in the direction of you know the normal current flow and a path that reverses. So what we'll show is how the uh, measurement system handles the different current flow. And so in this drawing here you can see I have the power supply flowing through the sensor in the direction that is marked on the sensor and we'll see that the uh, capacity, you know, the accumulated power will rise in this mode the battery will fill, so going from left to right, and this little arrow here will show that the uh, system is receiving power. If I flip the sensor around, we'll see that the battery decreases, the amp hour accumulation decreases, this little arrow here uh, ends up pointing out. So I'm going to hold this uh, meter up so, uh, next to my electronic load so you can see that the measurements uh, are fairly close. Out of the box the voltage uh, measurement of this unit is pretty accurate but the current measurement was off somewhat and needs to be calibrated. I'll show that process in just a minute. So right now um, I'm drawing one amp. This is very accurate and we can see that this is fairly close. It's teetering maybe almost 10% off. I will increase the current. I am now pulling 10 amps. We can see that my voltage dropped a little bit uh, because of the uh, IR drop in my wiring and I'm measuring 10 amps. And we can see down here that I am accumulating uh, watt hours and amp hours. It's also tracking the time and it's calculating the real-time power. I'll go up to 20 amps. The current measurement is pretty accurate and this 11.6 volts that again is I'm getting about 0.4 volts drop through my wiring. This is an accurate measurement. I verified that with my uh, benchtop DMM. Go back down to one amp and when we start to drop into the lower currents say less than an amplifier the linearity of this 
uh, uh, gets worse. Let's look at some lower currents. Let's go to half an amp. And we are off by uh, at least 100 milliamps. And this display, uh, it if it uh, drops below a certain uh, specified uh, current, it will automatically turn the display off. Uh, I have not figured out how to turn that mode off. It's kind of obnoxious. If I pull up here into higher current, you see it turns back on. Let's go down to 200 milliamps and you can see here that uh, we can't even measure that right now and it's having a problem down here. They're below about 500 milliamps it's having problems. Now you could calibrate uh, this to work a little bit better in the low current readings or you know settings but the higher currents are get really far off. Let's look at some operational characteristics. Right now the current is flowing in the direction of the marking in the sensor and we can uh, determine that by this little arrow and that is pointing to the left and we'll also note that our amp hours watt hour accumulated uh, accumulation is increasing. See we just went from 1.6 to 1.61 I'm going to flip my switch and have the current go the other direction. Okay, so we can still see that uh, we're that five amps is passing through the sensor, but now the current direction has changed. So that arrow is now pointing to the right, and if we look at the accumulated uh, amp hour watt hour numbers, uh, those are going to decrease. Uh, how do we clear this setting here? So what we're going to do is we're going to use this, see the little yellow box right there next to the out? We're going to push the down arrow until that square box goes off screen. It's off screen, I'll hit OK, and that has zeroed those settings so we now have a new accumulation starting. You can also, uh, I'm charging a battery, I want to uh, have this little indicator specify you know the charge or the current state of charge of my battery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this OAH setting, I'm going to push and hold and I can increase how many amp hours I want my battery to be. And I'm going to set that to one amp hour. You can barely see it, but there's a little, the battery is just starting to fill. It's uh, got that little red bar at the end. And uh, as our accumulated power increases, we'll see that the battery starts to fill. So I'm going to make that move a little faster by increasing the uh, load here. So I'm currently at 5 amps. Let's ramp this up to say 20 amps. We can see that the accumulated power is increasing. and my battery is starting to fill and we can see that by the you know just the graphical indication and we can also see this little percentage here that my battery is 34 35 percent full if i flip my direction switch that shoves the current in the other direction of the sensor we'll see the battery and all these percentages start to decrease still pulling the same amount of power battery percentage is decreasing 
Let's look at the calibration method next. So what we're going to do is we want to start with no current uh, flowing through the sensor. So my uh, load is on, my load is off, and let's turn off the display. Push the OK button, turn the power on, and release it once the power is turned on. We're now in the calibration mode, which is indicated by this mode 1040 4.4. What we'll do is we'll push the OK button, and this cycles us through the different calibrations. As I mentioned earlier, my voltage calibration was pretty much right on, so I didn't need to worry about this. This is, uh, from what I under, can understand, this is a two-point calibration, and so you would uh, do a calibration at a lower voltage and a calibration at a higher voltage. We're going to go to this uh, zero amps. If this was displaying current while there is no current flowing, you would push the up-down button here to adjust uh, the reading. Um, I think what a lot of people are having problems with is this plus uh, 4 amp and minus 4 amp. Um, what you want to do is you want to calibrate I think typically at a pretty high current and not at say 1 amp or you know or half an amp. Uh, if you calibrate at a higher current you get more resolution. So what I am going to do is I'm going to run my supply up to say 20 amps. We can see that from my previous calibration that it is on pretty close, but I can push these numbers and release and see now it's saying 20.1 amps. I can go the other direction and you might need to play with it a little bit. Now what you want to do is you want to do another calibration with the current flowing the other direction. So I'm going to flip my switch and we can see that we're off just a, a little bit here so I'm going to adjust that now we're around 20 amps I'm going to hit the OK button come into save and uh, remove the power and it will remember these calibration points. Turn off the power, wait a second or two, turn the power back on. I could have adjusted that just a little bit more but you see we're, we're, it's reading close to 20 amps now. Uh, I think that's about it for right now uh, on the operation of this and I'll show a few more diagrams. And this is just kind of a refresher uh, that amp hours accumulate when our current is flowing in the direction of the arrow. In this method we see that the accumulation goes down. This is my actual test setup indicating my switch which uh, can provide current in the forward or in the reverse. Uh, this is what a actual system might look at, look like this could be your power supply or solar panels. You would have the inverter sitting over here and your battery. So uh, you could be charging your battery. The display would show your capacity increasing, your battery charging. When you remove the power supply, the battery is going to flow the current this direction and the display would indicate that. The user interface, I discussed a couple of quick things calibration. You push the OK button when the uh, display is first getting power and you'll enter the calibration mode. To reset the accumulation you move this little box, that little yellow box, you move it all the way till it's off screen and then hit OK and that will reset. To set your battery capacity you move your cursor to the OAH, push and hold for a second or two and then you'll be able to adjust the amp hour or the capacity of your battery. There are two ways of powering this device. I'll show a close-up of that in just a second. But 
Uh, I would call them independent power and self power. Uh, right now I am running my unit in independent power and there are some screw terminal connections here and you could hook this up to a wall wart. That wall wart needs to be typically 12 volts. Um, I measured the power requirement at 12 volts at 50 milliamps or about 0.5 watts. The minimum power at, at what point the device turns off is 10 volts. To have this uh, in this mode, J3 should have a jumper. You can have the unit self-powered and you'd put a jumper on J4 and your uh, power and what you measure are both coming in on this connection in the independent power mode. This is the power for the system and this is going to be say your wall wart. This is the connection that you want to measure the voltage and the jumper is set to the far left. If you are going to go in the self-powered mode, this is what you're going to measure and is also your power supply and you would move the jumper to the far right. Well, that's about it for this uh, Yiko or Drock charge, discharge, capacity, amp hour, meter. It's 30 bucks, it's pretty cheap, it appears to work fairly well. Uh, just the documentation is uh, a little hard to understand and the uh, user interface operation it takes a little bit of uh, getting used to. If you like this type of thing, uh, let me know. If you uh, really like this type of stuff, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. And if there's more questions, I can uh, maybe do another video that expands on these other uh, features that are available. That's about it. Thanks.